as a foreigner in a new country, not having work experience in the in the country you're in, it can be challenging. But just keep going, and hopefully you find something that you can truly manage. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel and you see me for the first time, thank you for stopping by, and to my returning subscribers. Thank you for coming back. My name is Sangoli Ibesoku. Today I'll be sharing a story about my first job hunting experience in the UK and how I finally got my first job. So a little bit of a background story. I was born in Nigeria. I moved to the UK in 2012 slash 2013. And I say 2012 slash 2013 because I initially came in 2012, but then I went back to Nigeria for about five months and then I came back in 2013 and I came on a spouse dependent visa. And this meant that there was no limit to the amount of work I could do or the sort of work I could do. And then it also meant that I could study for whatever degree I wanted. However, if I decided to study, I was going to pay international student fees and anybody knows that boy, that is not cheap. So at the time when I arrived in the UK, I had already been to the US and I had my bachelor's degree from a university in the US and my degree was a bachelor of music in music performance and my primary and secondary instruments if you like was singing and violin. So fast forward to me in the UK. Now I came in with a plan that I wanted to study further so I wanted to get a master's degree in music still and also I had done a bit of research and I knew that um, with my degree, which was music performance and I studied vocal performance, I knew that getting a job as a performing musician, getting it, making a living as a performing musician, I knew that that was nearly impossible, if not impossible, especially um, in the Western classical music world. Now, anybody who studied uh, vocal performance or Western classical music, but generally singers, would know this, you need a lot more studying than first degree to even dream of making a living as a performing classical singer. So my plan was to find a job as a music instructor and then I would save up and then do the master's degree. Now, if, you're, if anyone doesn't know what music instructor job entails, so music instructors are um, people who have studied music, generally performance, and then you go into schools and you teach the instrument you play. So in my own case, I was hoping to go into music schools or like mainstream schools and then teach singing and violin. So I focused on looking for such jobs. So after months of looking through the internet, like searching and coming through the internet, it became quite obvious that these jobs were not easy to find. And the very few ones I found, I applied and there were no responses to talk of going for an interview. So I was becoming desperate and because I really wanted to get the masters done and my plan was or my hope was that when I if I did a masters in performance again I would be able to combine in teaching instruments or teaching music with performing. So I was really desperate to get the masters going and get that done with. So I intensified my search and at this point I was just looking for any job at all. I didn't really mind what the job entailed. So I applied for everything. I even remember at one point, I thought because I was applying for just about any job, I thought putting in my CV that I had a bachelor's degree was going to make it look like I was overqualified for some work. So I, I took out my degree for some of the jobs I applied and still no response from anyone. So one day I was just taking a walk a bit further from the neighborhood where I lived and I noticed a sign that said um, job carers wanted, so job application details for carers and they were hiring now. Oh, I was really excited. So I took the details, took the information and then went home and quickly applied. And within a few days, I got a call to come in for an interview. I was excited. I went down to the office and I had an interview and I was told, I think there and then, or yeah, there and then or within few, maybe the next day or just a few hours later, but it was quite a short process. I was told that I was successful and that I could start. But however, before you start care work, 
the agencies they are required to train the staff. So I was to undergo some training along with other new batch that were starting. So the training was to last for a couple of days. So the training came, I was still really excited to finally be starting something. And um, I went down to the, the, the office where we're having the, where we're to have the training. So the first day I was, I was doubting the, uh, whether I could really do this work because I was starting to see what the work really entailed. I know I'd heard stories about people doing care work, but I didn't really think that it would be so challenging. You know, I thought I could find something I can manage, you know. By the second day, I was, I was like, there is just no way I can do this work. Now, the truth is, I am the person that throughout my growing up, you know, when they ask uh, kids, what do you want to be or what do you aspire to be? I have never in my life thought about doing anything in medical field, never interested. I know that um, care work was different from or far away from being a doctor or something like that, but still the way the work was set up, I had to advise myself that there was no way I could do this work. So I spoke to the management, I said I, I couldn't go further. So that was it. I returned the uniform they had given me and went home and you can imagine, so all of my plan had I just watched all, all of my plan go this way because I thought I was starting something. So I went back home and the search continued and as you can imagine I became even more desperate. So at this point I was telling anyone and everyone I knew or anybody who listened that I really wanted a job. I remember also um, from time to time when I would go um, to around the train station. If anything took me to the train station or anything like that, I saw people catching the train to work and I really longed for a day that I would be one of those who were dressed up in the morning and going somewhere to work. So one day we had some family friends over and we were discussing and they, they, I told them about the story of how I nearly went into care work, but during the training, I just realized I should better look for something else because I couldn't go forward with that. So one of the ladies said she could look around in her office place. She thought there might be something around so she could look and tell me if there was anything going, which I would be interested in. A few days later, she told me that in their office or where she worked, she worked in a big hospital. And by the way, at this, this time, I actually lived in England. So I lived in London area, more like the outskirts of London, but this work, she worked within the inner parts of London, like central London. And she said the hospital they set up, which was called in-house bank services. So this is um, like temp work. So the hospital is so big that they had their own sort of temp agency, which is what this in-house bank uh, department basically was. They hired uh, people that weren't really on contract. So if anyone knows about zero contract hours, so zero contract um, hours is like you're hired in this company or they are not obligated to provide work to you. You're provided with work as and when it's available and if there is no work available, basically you don't get paid. So that's, um, so she said they had the in-house bank services and they were hiring. And if I was interested, they were hiring for administrators. I could come down and uh, pick up the form or ask about the, the application process. I said, of course, I was interested. So. <laughs> So the next week, I believe that must be, that must have been a Monday. I quickly went down to the London um, to the hospital. Met her. She took me around to the bank office. I got the form, applied and submitted the form, and went back home. And a few days, they just, they called me, and I, um, said they were they wanted to have an interview with me. So went for the interview. It was successful and I was offered the job as a, an in-house bank administrator. Now, uh, within the hospital, and I believe this is actually so for most of the NHS hospitals. If you don't know what NHS is, it's the National Health Service, So, which means at the point where you're receiving treatment, you don't pay, but it doesn't mean it's free because every month something is deducted from your pay to contribute towards that. So anyways, back to the story. So. For the admin, this is also true for nurses and some other allied prof some other professions within the um, in the healthcare. 
but within the admin so you've got uh, I think band 1 to 8 so I, I was started on band 3 when you're posted to a department your 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 stay in that department could last between weeks it can last from weeks to even up to a year within one department and when you're no longer needed so let's say for example you're covering a sick leave or maternity leave so when the person comes back you get moved to a different department so i was started on band three like i said earlier and i was working within what was called what is called medical records and the medical records is a place where the patient's files are kept so if uh, the consultants needed patient's files to see the patients, uh, they, their secretaries would basically request for the files from the medical records. And those of us who worked within the medical records were responsible for pulling these files out and then the secretaries picked them up. Or sometimes we would actually deliver the files to the secretaries. And also when they were done with the files and they were returned to the records, we also made sure they went in the right place or the right order. So it was just a uh, basic job. I dealt with uh, patient files. I stayed within in that department for more than a month, but eventually I, I was moved around different departments in the hospital. And um, I even stayed in one department for about six months. I ended up staying in the hospital for a total of three years. And within my first year plus, I managed to save enough money to start the master's program. and. I was able to work part-time whilst doing the master's program and when I also finished from the master's I still I still maintain the job on part-time basis because um, I even though I found a job uh, working as an instructor it wasn't full-time and it wasn't very the hours weren't very reliable so I still maintained the hospital job so that's that's it in a nutshell that's that was my first that was my job hunting experience and how I got my first job. We've been moving since ever since. So I do hope this uh, inspires someone. If someone is out there looking for work and really trying to get started as a foreigner in a new country, not having work experience in the, in the country you're in, it can be challenging, but just keep going and hopefully you'll find something that you can truly manage. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked the video enough to click the like button. And if you like the contents of my channel, please consider subscribing and also share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful or share my other videos. Thank you.